This is a Focus on South Florida holiday presentation, finding the path to heal your heart. Welcome everyone, I'm Michelle Gillen. As we embrace this holiday season and embark on a new year, it can be both a glorious and challenging time. Our heart, our heads can be stuck between visions of yesterday and tomorrow and in need of healing, hope and love. Today, we embark on a mission together to illuminate the power of love and light within ourselves, even when in the darkest of times. It said home is where the heart is, and so we left the studio to broadcast from this little gem decorated to mirror what can be a season of joy and gratitude. Our program is inspired by a treasure of a book, Sonia's Ring, 11 Ways to Heal Your Heart. Love, compassion, forgiveness, wisdom. Its mission is to help us navigate the tough times and even find secrets of healing in sorrow. We begin with a man who devotes his life to the mission of healing the heart. Folks travel from all over the world to study with him, to celebrate and understand the healing connection between the body, the mind, the soul, and the heart. Trust me, if you listen to your own heart, it will never guide you wrong. His name is Ubi Sheikh. Listen to your instincts. A spiritual teacher who, through the telling of ancient stories and the practice of energy and breathwork, guides students to open the window to their hearts and hear the messages that lie within. I believe our heart is our true self, is, is what we are instinctively, it's innate in us to be kind, to be loving. A path to the heart can lead through the mind's eye, and Ubi urges each of us to see ourselves through fresh eyes, not the projections we put on ourselves. But I think we've compromised on our true being, which is being true to ourselves. We want to define ourselves. You are a journalist. I am so-and-so. I'm this. I'm not. You know, don't bracket yourself. Don't limit yourself. On living your dreams and overcoming naysayers. You have a vision. Be realistic. You know, it's not going to happen. You're not going to shift the global consciousness overnight. Be realistic. It's a compromising word. Be a dreamer. Listen to your heart. Have visions for yourself, your world. And to grow, flow with change. Don't fight it. It's no different than if my, if my blood stops flowing through my body. I'm dead. Life is like that. It has to constantly flow through your body. New ideas have to come in. Old ideas have to be rehashed, revisited, and, and then that's what the heart does. It pushes, takes the old blood, purifies it. It's a world where we're bombarded by the minute on places like Facebook with images of everyone else's apparent happiness. And then people look at themselves and they're like, wait a minute, everybody has it figured out and I'm the only one. So we're being harsh on ourselves because we're measuring our happiness with others. You'll only know the answer, he says, if you spend time to discover yourself. That means being present in the moment you're living, not the past or the future. We don't live right now, right here. We aren't content with ourselves. So we, in my opinion, we are just telling the world, we are not enough, there is not enough, or I'm not worthy. But if you truly want bliss, you find it within yourself. In my opinion, healing or transformation does not happen. It's not the amount of time. It can happen in an instant. And the small changes in life can open up the heart, starting with how you hug. Normally, we hug like on this side, like yeah, this. We do it like this, okay? But now feel the difference. It's a heart to heart. Heart to heart, okay. How does that feel? Good. How does that feel? Very good. You want to go to the best, the holiest place in the world? You are in it. It's like the mask is inside you and you're looking for the fragrance everywhere that is residing inside you. A unique you on your own priceless path. We are all innately love. Be gracious. Be generous towards each other. Find the love in you. Love yourself first, and then we can love others. We can be inspired by other people, but we should never live other people's lives, live our own life. 
find your own book. The last chapter should be, I lived my life and I'm happy. And now the amazing love story that inspired this program healed a broken heart and may hold magic that could touch yours. You're about to discover the secret of Sonia's ring and lessons of the heart that rose from the ashes. What do you do when your heart and soul are broken? How do you heal a broken heart? Can your soul ever be whole again? The, you wrote about the ache in the heart. It's a broken heart, yes. And we all, we all understand what a broken heart feels like. And it's that ache, especially when you lose, well, when you lose anyone, but for, for mothers, because mothers are the ones who give us life. A once broken-hearted daughter, Sonia Tita Pupilo shares the same name as her beloved mother, who 10 years ago found herself sitting two seats away from Mohammed Atta, a terrorist who would fly American Flight 11 into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. On September 11th, when my mom perished on Flight 11, it was as if I died, too. Virtually inseparable, mom and daughter always flew together, just not this time. It was so painful. It's the type of pain that you can't even, it's physically, it hurts. Robbed of her best friend, within a day of the dizzying tragedy, Sonia knew she had to keep her mother and her mother's unconditional love alive through words, although she had no idea of the miracle still to come. She couldn't let go of her mom's last words to her before departing for the airport. I'm a survivor and I'll always be a survivor. She watched her slip out of the house, the door behind her closing in a most chilling way. There's this double door, heavy, heavy wooden door. And when she walked out, the door sort of slammed like that, like a wind or something. For 12 months, Sonia, her brothers, and her dad tried to find a message in the massacre. Her father clung to his wedding band, praying that somehow he could just touch the one he gave his wife 40 years before. No sign of her had been found in the rubble. Months passed, no word, no body, no hope. And then the phone rang. They recovered this ring 11 to 12 months after and they found it under over a million and a half tons of rubble, debris and melted steel. Amid the twisted steel, stone and sorrow, rescuers found Sonia's ring, still intact on her mom's left hand. Little more was found. Well, it's a miracle. It's really a miracle. The discovery of the ring illuminated her path and gave breath to the book 11 Ways to Heal Your Heart, a guide of help and hope no matter what your 9-11 moment is, be it death, injury, loss of a job. It's your 9-1-1 moment, and it is a horrific moment. It's scary. Uh, it's okay to cry, but you have to have compassion. You have to have faith and know that no matter what, you're not alone. Thousands have written Sonia to tell her how her book has changed their lives, given them hope, and now she's relying on it once again. Faced with her own life and death struggle as she was seriously injured in a hit and run car accident. Currently in a wheelchair, she hopes the lessons of Sonia's ring can be a lifeline for others facing their 9-11 moments. She recently met with Uli, and he shares the inspiration he sees illuminating from her struggle. Sonia, in all these challenging moments in her life, was able to find and tap into that, that love. And from there she found forgiveness, and she's inspired many people, thousands if not millions, and I hope more but that's only because she could find that love. Two truly amazing people. Up next, how the ancient art of meditation can help heal the heart, how you can block out the noise and chaos of this holiday season and find the silence within.
Whether you're hurting from the loss of a loved one, a job, a dream, finding the answer to your rescue plan is most likely within you. You just need to be silent enough to hear it. If life seems to be passing by at warp speed, we're all running so fast and so hard. And you suspect stress and chaos is eating away at your body and mind. That it's very difficult to slow down. Breathing in. And let it go. For many people, it's a life raft. Yes, yes, absolutely. It can be life transforming. It's a key to living. It is about bringing this mindful awareness into moment-to-moment -moment experience throughout our day. Sounds simple, but it's not. It's a unique practice of meditation and a radical approach to life, one that blossomed after doctors made a discovery. People suffering from chronic pain found relief by meditating. Their ability to thrive in spite of it changed. And incredibly, that's not all that may have changed. Studies reviewing the MRIs of the brains of meditators are showing remarkable clues that the brain can be trained and ultimately even mimic and potentially look like the brain of a healthier person. There's a very specific set of regions that look healthier in the people that have been practicing. Dr. Amishi Jha, neuroscientist, University of Miami. This is the cutting edge of science. Dr. Jha says the reason the research is so exciting is that those same regions of the brain, right behind the forehead, are the ones that most deteriorate and downgrade during aging. But actually what our brain typically does, what our minds typically do, is mental time travel. So we're usually, you know, thinking about the past and and reliving experiences that have already occurred, or we're in sort of a future-focused frenzy about what we're going to do next. And so a lot of that space of being in the past or the future is tied to our experience of stress. And stress is increasingly linked to disease. You can actually see structural changes in the brain after as short as eight weeks of doing something as simple as focusing on your breath for 30 minutes. They report feeling like they're waking up to their own life and realizing that, you know, all we have is the present moment. So showing up to it may, might make a lot of sense. Joining us now, Alexander Allenbert, Coral Gables firefighter, interior designer, and a student of meditation for over 10 years. Yeah. And a teacher. Yeah. We thank you for letting us do this program in your home, which has been the site of many a, a spiritual summit, and we feel the energy here today. So many people say, well, I want to meditate, but I just can't sit still. What do they come to you? What's their angst they bring to you? There is a place in their heart that needs to be healed. There's a place of silence that needs to be taking place in their minds. So that harmony between the mind and the heart is something that is needed as much as drinking water daily. There's like a spiritual search for it, or a thirst for it, literally. There's a crying out for it. You can see it in everyone's attitude and their personalities in behaviors, in traffics. It's almost everywhere and it's contagious. So I find that the most important thing that we need to do is find harmony within ourselves and maintain that. So when, when we're out amongst others, there's harmony. But how do you make the connection between finding that place of harmony in ourselves and meditating? Why is there a connection? How do we get there? There has to be a harmony between the heart and the mind. So in the mind, what we need is some tools that where we can link our mind to some thoughts. It's not just think, oh, I'm going to think positive. Okay. Positive thinking, okay, what does positive mean? A very simple method is just remember who you are. Remember that you're a loveful person, you're a person full of values, you're a person that has respect and honesty, dignity, love in your heart, mercy, compassion. All of these virtues are needed. So we can literally, our mantra can be just to sit in calm and quiet, but say to ourselves, I am of value. I deserve to be happy. 
Yes, we have to link our mind to something. The mind will always continue to think. We have to just change the thought. And in that change of thought, the attitude will change, the feelings will change, then our actions will come across changed. Well, we're all going to work on that. Yeah. We thank you. Meditation, the gift we give ourselves. Yeah, sweet. Thank you. The gift of love. Now let's unwrap the gift of gratitude. Watch how, by thinking out of the box and out of the kitchen, a celebrity chef's generosity of heart is changing lives. As sun-kissed rays dance amid the vines and the summer heat bakes the brow of farmers, the air is sweet with the scent of blossoms. We've got a jewel here. It's basil. Because we never get to see that. Yeah, smell that and hope. You're able to grow something, be able to feed a neighbor, a child, a family member. Here to purchase and pick fruits and vegetables and herbs this day, one of the world's most celebrated chefs, Norman Van Aken. We'll pick the food now and by three o'clock this afternoon we'll have a feast. Throughout the week he travels to Homestead to this first of its kind organic farm project in the United States. Everyone here doing the planting, harvesting, picking, canning and cooking are formerly homeless. You're working, you know, firsthand with the land and you're healing the land and healing yourself. The fruits of labor here all to be served up in Van Aken's Castle in the Sky restaurant, Tuyo. And there's more to this recipe for success. I feel refreshed just being in there. It is. It's a healing. It's a, it's a tonic for the soul. It's a brainchild born out of a marriage between the Miami-Dade Homeless Trust, the Verde Gardens Housing Program, this culinary crusader, and Miami-Dade's Culinary Institute. Why am I buying asparagus from down in South America right now when I could be getting the most beautiful Malabar spinach that is delicious yes. and on the greens? Look at right it. It's, it's fantastic. gorgeous. This day, we literally pick a menu for a most special dinner. Van Aken's going to cook and serve up for the farmers. I better do it right. You better do it right. Because they grew it with their own hands, yeah. so I feel a special sense of like, this is, a, this is the connection. This night, the guests arrive, a night of appreciation. Thank you, going to the farmers. I'm wow, because this, I feel like a Cinderella. Last we met, mm -hmm. we were in the fields together mm -hmm. with all those mosquitoes. And the, uh -huh. How do you feel about the night? Um, feels good. We do feel very special coming here today. It's, it's all kind of overwhelming. What do you think about the being the guest of honor tonight? It's amazing. It's almost surreal. I mean, I would have never thought working on a farm would lead up to, you know, being a guest at a place as, as nice as this. I'm, I'm very, very happy. As the Freedom Tower illuminates the city behind us, Families, mothers, fathers, and children, formerly homeless and without jobs, tonight savor a sense of independence and gratitude thanks to a community that offered a helping hand. It's returning the sense of dignity and empowerment to individuals that were probably set aside by the economy for a while. My dream is to see farms like this all over Miami in every nook and cranny, growing food everywhere so that, that nobody has to go without. Up next, a recipe of love, hope, and faith, all wrapped up in a red suit. How one Santa's mission healed his heart and might stir yours. Woman of strength. Sometimes when faced with what feels like the ultimate loss and sorrow, it's tough to figure out how to go on. But as my colleague Gio Benita shows us, one Miami man healed his heart by jumping into a red suit and carrying around sacks filled with kindness and compassion. Anywhere he goes, the jolly man in red lights up the room 
with a full-grown beard and a contagious smile. But this Santa has a deeper story. I see a lot of people, children, that don't have anything, and so I try to give as much of my free time as I can. He grew up as Russell James Alexander. He worked as a Miami taxi driver for three decades. He wasn't always Santa, but his brother Dave, who you see in this photo, was Santa all his life. He just was Santa Claus. He loved doing it. Two years ago, Dave died and left behind a Christmas legacy. His brother Russell did not want Santa to disappear. He grew the beard, put on the suit, and delivered smiles. And every day when I go out the door, I look at his picture and I say, here we go, Dave. He we used to go like this all the time. Santa walked into Miami Children's Hospital to give sick children teddy bears from the Neighbors for Neighbors Adopt-A-Bear program. After one of the visits away from our cameras, Santa began to cry. There was one little girl, it was just, uh, you could see she was very frightened uh, and, uh, and being sick. It just, it, it, was, it, was, it was very hard. I but he continued delivering teddy bears. I get a lot of uh, happiness out of it, I, uh, that I'm doing something good for children and giving, and giving joy, because that's what it's all about, the love in your heart and to keep the love that represents Christmas all throughout the year. That's my message. Santa delivers happiness all over Miami, at the hospital, at kids' parties, anywhere the Christmas spirit lives, all while thinking of that other Santa who changed his life. He motivates me a lot, and I, I know he'd be proud of me. I'm convinced he is, and he touches each of us to dig a little deeper into our own hearts to give a little more, and the return on that can be priceless. And we're taught to do everything but be with ourselves. And you believe that is the first place for the garden of love to grow. You've got to love yourself. It's already growing. You don't have a choice. Even if you don't want it, it will be there. You just haven't entered the garden. That's the only difference. You are the garden. You just have to open the door and enter it. A path that always begins by going inward. From my heart to yours, I hope that this half hour will resonate for you through this holiday season and beyond, that the gifts of love and gratitude and joy will open doors to helping you heal your heart and finding the path that will lead to your most fulfilling journey. We thank you for joining ours. <laughs>